Hi my friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Tori if you're new here and today I am going to be showing you some medicinal herbs and flowers that I like to keep on hand. Um, I have to do a few disclaimers when I do this type of video, so stick with me. First of all, it is such a beautiful day. Of course, I wanted to just do my intro with my sunflowers, my pride and joy. Um, I would not say I use them medicinally. Um, I really do love feeding them to the chickens though. Um, so my first disclaimer, I am not a doctor. Please consult your doctor before you go ahead and take any of my advice for your ailments. Um, secondly, these are items that have worked for me and my husband personally. Um, I have not, you know, helped friends with this. I know of friends that have used some of these remedies and it has aided in um, a lot of their own ailments. Um, Thirdly, uh, this is no attack on anybody who is in the profession of uh, prescribing any pharmaceuticals. This is just my alternative natural way of um, keeping things on hand that can aid in our family's ailments. I will say this is very budget friendly coming from a family with one salary and um, trying to pinch pennies at every every chance we get um, growing a lot of these items and drying them myself um, seeds cost little to nothing so I love doing this I am not uh, thoroughly educated in this these are just trial and errors I've been researching this topic for quite a few years now and I know the ins and outs of it so um, if you want to see what I like to plant in the garden, as well as some things that I have on hand, stay tuned. I will say, with that being said, I do like <laughs> I do like to grow a lot of the items, but it's okay if you, you know, if you don't, it's okay if you order them online. I will point you in the direction where you can order some um, trusted medicinal herbs and plants online as well. If you have any further questions on it, please feel free to email me. I have a lot of accounts that I follow, a lot of books that I've read, um, <laughs> and a lot of resources. So if you are excited, I'm gonna take you around the garden and show you what I'm planting this year. And then I'm gonna bring you inside and show you what I have in my apothecary. And I'm going to tell you about their uses. Again, please consult with your doctor before you use any of these. I will tell you how I like to use them as well. Without further ado, let's get right into this. We are kicking this off with my favorite oregano. It smells delicious, it tastes delicious, but you can infuse it into an oil. It is a natural antibiotic. It could help lower cholesterol. It's an antioxidant. It could help treat yeast infections, improve gut health. It has anti-inflammatory properties and it could relieve some of your pain and some believe that it has cancer fighting properties. Next up on the list is going to be sage, another one that tastes amazing and smells super awesome. Sage is loaded with antioxidants. It helps oral health. It could ease your menopause symptoms. It definitely reduces blood sugar levels. And for me, it supports memory and brain health. I need all the help I can get. Um, being a new mom has been a challenge on my brain health. So sage is a great one. I love to drink it in my peach tea. Next up we have yarrow. It is very easy to grow. It's drought tolerant and it uses a little bit of water to keep going. I love yarrow because it can fight off colds and flu. It really helps alleviate my allergies and it is a showstopper when it comes to cuts, scrapes, and wounds. All I do is take this leaf kind of smush it up in my hand and put it on whatever open wound I have and it stops the blood. Next up is lavender. I have this variety over here, but I have several growing in the garden, which I'll show you. But lavender is awesome for anxiety. It helps with headaches. It helps with skin care, eczema, wound healing, and mood issues. It truly is a versatile herb, and I suggest you grow it. It's very easy to grow. Next up is California poppy. This powerhouse is really awesome for soothing nervous tension, anxiety, difficult sleeping. I've taken this in an infused oil and it's really helped with my anxiety, but it also helps reduce pain. 
Next up is going to be chamomile. I've definitely gone through mine this season, but I really love this in tea for relaxation. And then we have some rosemary. Again, very, very beautiful, and it smells great as well as tastes great too. I have taken this in capsule form or infused in an oil, and I take it because I'm anemic. So this has definitely improved my blood circulation, and it gives me a boost to the immune system. I love rosemary. This is probably the most beautiful flower I grow, but I have these dahlias here. Typically, I'm going for the darker variety, but there was a mistake at the garden center. I use dahlias to help with digestion. Whenever I am not feeling my best self when it comes to my stomach um, and any issues that come from that, I drink dahlia in a tea, and it helps so, so much. And they are very beautiful. I just pop the heads off of them and they just keep coming and coming. Very easy to grow here. I definitely need to get the weeds out of this one. Next up is basil. If you did not know, you can take basil in oil form or you could drink it in a tea. I first heard about this because I suffer from osteochondritis desiccans. It was explained to me that this is an early form of arthritis and this may help and it has. It has so many anti-inflammatory properties. It helps with heart disease, um, bowel issues, and it's antibacterial. This one is going to be marigolds. I plant these as a sister plant to keep away bugs and rodents, but marigolds are great for the skin. They really help with eczema. I like to grind mine down and mix it with some aloe vera and a little bit of a oil, a carrier oil with some cocoa butter and I rub it on my skin and it really seems to help. So marigolds grow awesome out here in Colorado and I suggest you take a look into that. Next, of course, I had to include cannabis. Cannabis is great for just about anything. It is such a powerhouse. A lot of people turn their nose down to cannabis because they've been misinformed. And I will say, if you Google a lot of these herbs and plants and flowers, you might find yourself being misinformed too. So dig deeper. Don't trust everything that you read. Do your research. Cannabis is awesome. Speak of awesome and easy to grow, we are going in with a purple coneflower or echinacea. Echinacea is great for your immune system. It can help lower your blood sugar. It reduces anxiety. It helps with inflammation and it helps with skin health. You might be seeing a pattern here about these herbs and what they can do for you. So again, you really have to check into what herbs and plants and flowers work best for you. I thought I'd show you in here. I just have some herbs drying in my lovely garage, and this is my morning routine. I drink some coffee, talk to the chicks, clean out their coop, and I cycle through my herbs. I make sure I am picking off what needs to be dry and then taking down what's already dry and harvesting it to my indoor apothecary, which is where we are going to go next. I will show you how I store these, but I did want to show you this beautiful setup. I do have some sunflowers here. I have yarrow, lavender, um, pineapple sage, and it's just a blessing. I'm so grateful to have this. All right. Hey there. We are inside. My neighbors are having um, their trucks rev up again, so I apologize, but um, I do have a few things inside. I don't have everything that I would put on this full list, which I will type out in the description box down below, but I'm gonna go over what I have and the benefits that I have seen it used for. Um, but of course, each plant medicine has its own medicinal benefits. It just depends on the user. So we are starting off with St. John's War. I, between the laundry and the trucks right now, I'm sorry. <laughs> but we're starting off with St. John's War. And um, I keep this dry. I drink most of these in teas, to be honest with you. You could make tonics, you can make some sort of elixirs. I've seen um, St. John's War in a detox bath. Um, so it's kind of infused through your pores, if that makes sense, or infused into your pores. Um, but again, it really just depends. Um, now, if you're working with an herb like wolfsbane or something like that, that, that is where it gets a little complicated. I don't have any of that on hand um, just because of the, the kids, you know, um, it can be fatal. 
So when you're working with some herbs that I, I haven't really mentioned in this video and probably won't ever on the channel, unless I get expert level on this kind of thing, so back to it, what I was saying, um, there are many different ways that you can take this. Typically, I'm drinking it in a tea or infusing it into some sort um, of alcohol. You've seen me do that with roses. So I'm keeping 100 proof um, alcohol on hand, most times just for different things around the home. Um, it is preferred that most of these herbs that are making those infusions are used fresh, but it's okay if you use them dry. Um, it just takes a little bit longer, and um, when they're dry, um, instead of fresh, you're not receiving all of the medicinal benefits when you're infusing it into the alcohol. So that's why I typically like drinking it in teas and things like that. Some people just blend all of these herbs together and make one big powerhouse of tea, but Back to it, St. John's wort is used for mood disorders, specifically um, depression. I haven't seen it help my anxiety, but I have seen a little um, balance in hormones when it comes to my cycle of the month. Um, that's another thing I'll say, being a female, your cycle lends a lot to um, your mood, obviously, and also different things. I mean, I can tell when I'm going to get a migraine during the month. I can tell when I'm going to crave sweets or um, when I am not going to feel my best self, when I'm feeling nauseous. Uh, it just all depends. You have to really get in tune with your cycle. So St. John's wort. All right, next powerhouse. I'm going to try and keep inserting what the flower actually looks like or herb. Um, but it's going to be comfrey leaf. Comfrey leaf, I've seen it called different things. But the great thing about this is it contains allantoin, which um, really aids in wound healing, um, inflammation. Um, it's made to, you know, help with broken bones. It's a mender. So um, this is always going to be on hand um, in my apothecary but again it really <laughs> depends on you i'm trying not to say that every single time but um i feel like this one is a powerhouse and it should be in your um i guess in your pepper pantry in your garden in your apothecary however you're carrying this so comfrey leaf is awesome i see a lot of benefits when it comes to this um and yeah next one all right, another one is mugwort. I don't grow this in my garden this year, but I do pick it up at that apothecary up in Nederland um, whenever I get the chance. But mugwort for me, um, you can use it as a tonic to boost your energy levels, but I use it when I have an upset stomach. So it really helps with digestion. It's also known to help with colic for children. Um, that is something that I haven't mentioned, definitely consult with um, a pediatrician or your doctor before you go and give your children these herbs. Um, but it has been known to help with that. Um, but really, whenever I'm feeling crampy, achy, or I just have an upset stomach, perhaps I've eaten something wrong, I drink this tea and I would not say I instantly feel better, but I do have some sort of comfort depending on the strength of it. So mugwort, an important one. Um, and I keep a lot of this on hand. All right, I saved the best for last. Um, I call this Arnica, but the woman I get it from calls it Arnica, so I'm not sure. Um, I think it depends. Uh, I'm all about um, everybody pronouncing something differently, honestly. I think that's okay, but um, this, this is, um, this can do a lot. So it helps with joint pain, inflammation, relief from insect bites. I mean, just about, anything. I find comfort in it when I mix it with lavender, which I have dried right here. And what I do is put it in my sink with some hot water. And then I, whenever I'm feeling a migraine coming on, when I have those auras, if you have migraines, you know, um, I dip my feet in that water and I let it absorb through my feet and I'm just sitting literally on my countertop and I have an ice pack on my neck. So I was told to do it with lavender oil. I didn't have any on hand one time, so I tried the lavender and I tried Arnica because I, you know, I knew it was, I, I knew it was helping with inflammation, but I thought maybe if it could help something internally like that, perhaps it could help with 
migraines, which um, in my mind, like literally my mind, it feels like my head is swelling. Um, and I start not to be able to see in some of my eyes as the years go by, it depends which eye, but I, I literally cannot drive when I have migraines. Um, so this has been awesome. I keep a lot of this on hand. Um, and I just showed you a little glimpse into some other herbs here, but it depends um, what I yield from the garden or what they have on hand for a good price at the apothecary. Um, it just really depends. So we'll just go through here. I do have, I don't know if you can see some of these, but I'm gonna show you anyways. Um, this is the coneflower echinacea. I told you about the benefits there. I have pineapple sage. As beautiful as that plant is, and um, I feel like I'm picking stems from it every day, this is like not that big of a harvest. So um, normally at the end of the season, I'll have two big jars of these, which is awesome. Um, and yeah, I think the last one is yarrow. Let me see if I can switch you out here. Okay, you're kind of resting on the yarrow here, but I have it um, in here. And a lot um, of questions that I get from friends and family is storage. And um, I mean, like what, like what are you storing? Are you only storing the flower? Are you only doing the leaf? And I learned a lot from April, the person that I linked, um, she is of the woods is her account name, but um, you know, she harvests, she, she harvests the entire plant. So um, with yarrow, I just do the leaves and the buds um, and I don't use the stem, but it really depends. Like with echinacea, I'm only doing the leaves and the petals, uh, the sharp parts, just a little too much for me, but some people still steep that in their tea, that sharp part, and, um, you know, rave about the benefits from that center. Uh, with the lavender buds, I'm typically storing two different kinds. Um, I take the buds, they're really great, but I do cut up the stem and put it in tea. I don't find any issue with that. Um, you definitely have to do some research, some reading when it comes to what stems you're using, but I use pretty mild um, herbs and plants in my apothecary. And I think, um, you know, later on when I get a little bit more comfortable with this when I am um, a seasoned herbal person, then I think I will grow a lot more and keep a lot more on hand. Um, but yeah, with the jars, all I do is sanitize them with a splash of vinegar and hot water. Oh my gosh, sorry. <laughs> and make sure they're nice and dry. And then I just store them in this little spot behind me. Um, you kind of want to keep them out of light, but they are really beautiful too. So um, I go through these throughout a year or two, and then I just replenish every season. Um, honestly, most of these will be gone. Yarrow we use a lot because we have kids cuts and bruises all the time. I'm super clumsy. You've probably picked up on that. Um, so I'm always um, bandaged up. But as soon as I told you in the description of Yarrow, as soon as I get that wound, I run out and stick it on there and it stops the bleeding almost instantly. So yes, a lot of different benefits here. I feel like as much as I prepared for this video, I had things written down. I had bullet points, which is totally not me. Um, and then I, I, I just put it aside. I'm like, I, I just feel better talking this way. So I hope it wasn't too complicated. Please let me know in the comments any specific questions you have. I know a lot of you have come to me with ailments that you have and what um, herbal remedies would be the best for you. And again, I, I'm not a doctor, so I don't feel comfortable telling you exactly, but I do feel comfortable telling you some of the herbs that I have and what may assist you, if that makes sense. But my, um, my suggestion is to always go to your doctor if you're not comfortable with, um, you know, if you're not comfortable with the doctor that you have, go ahead and look for something with some Eastern medicine. There's just so many available resources at our fingertips. Um, I feel grateful to be in the time that we are um, because we can look back on our ancestors and see what worked for them and see what they used uh, when pharmaceuticals weren't even invented yet. So it's really empowering in my mind um, to have something at your fingertips that you can grow and heal yourself or your loved ones. Um, I think that, um, 
I think that's just something that I've always loved about these herbs and plants. So that's my little spiel for the day. I hope you learned a thing or two. Please drop all your comments in the comment box down below. In the description, I will have some literature about where I get my information, who I trust, um, and I'll have a list of items that uh, I have on hand at all times. So so I did want to include some things I don't have on hand right now, but I should. Um, white willow bark is a pain reliever. It's awesome. I have marshmallow root. Marshmallow root is super helpful at relieving some symptoms from a cold. Natural and herbal cough syrups can be made from this. And then we have golden seal. It's going to be my remedy for UTIs and kidney infections. As always, stay adventurous, stay creative, and I will see you next time. Bye, everyone. Oh, yes. we'll be